Hi, this is going to be an example of how to use mesh analysis to solve for VA and VB, the two voltages here, and the current through R3 and R4 for this circuit. So what we're going to do is draw on this a little bit. Now uh, we've got paint.net to do that. So uh, we need to assign mesh currents to all of the interior meshes here. Now. Because we have a current source here, we're going to end up forming a super mesh between the two meshes that are connected between that. But at least initially, and to see what's going on, let's assign mesh currents here. So we've got a circle tool. Nope. Let's see. That should do it. Yeah, circle tool. And then we're going to say we can make this go whatever way we want. So let's say that that one's going that way. And we'll call this one maybe I1. And then we'll assign some currents over these other meshes too. So let's label that one maybe going in that direction. And then we'll call this I2. And then we can also imagine that we're going to assign a mesh current up here at the top. And maybe we'll put that in this direction going to the going to the right. And then we'll label that as I3. And now here's where the super mesh part comes in. You can see that in the center here, we've got that the total current must be the current supplied by the current supply, the current source, which is 20 milliamps. And also the current here has to, from the mesh currents, it has to be equal to I2 plus I3. So we've got that I2 plus I3 is equal to 20 milliamps, which means that we don't need both I2 and I3. We could eliminate one of them. So maybe we'll say I3 is equal to 20 milliamps minus I2 right away, and then just label label that uh, on, the, on the circuit right at the top there. So what we could do is instead of labeling I3 as a new variable, we'll just go right up here and call this right at the start 20 milliamp minus I2. And that's the mesh current there. And then for the purpose of writing equations, what we're going to do is think about these two meshes together. So when we do KVL, we are not going to view these two separately. We're just going to go around uh, both of the of the meshes together. So we're going to do a, a loop maybe from the bottom left to the uh, around in the clockwise direction and use KVL for both meshes in one equation. We won't go around the current source for KVL. We'll go around both in the super mesh. Okay. So that is the setup for mesh analysis for the circuit. Let's copy that and paste it into, into a word file here. Then we'll get our equation editor going. All right. So KVL around the bottom left loop. I like to start at the bottom left corner of each loop just to keep things consistent. So around that loop, we'll have a KVL, which says some of the, some of the voltage rises equals the sum of the voltage drops. Or <clears throat> you could view this as the sum of the changes in voltage is equal to zero around any, any loop. Now, starting at the bottom left, we'll have a rise first of 2.5 volts. And then because we have current going in the left side, that's going to be a drop. So we have minus I1 times 100 ohms, 100 ohm I1. And then we've got a drop across R2 of the current going through that, which now we have both of these mesh currents going in this branch. So that would be I1 plus I2. So minus 220 ohm times I1 plus I2. And then we finish the loop. So we're back to back to the start. So we'll say that that's equal to zero. That's the first mesh equation that we get. Now the second one, we're going to use this super mesh as promised. So starting at the bottom left, 
Now this time, we've got the same 220 ohm times I1 plus I2, except in the direction we're moving, we're adding that in. That's gonna be a voltage rise in this direction since it was a drop in the top to bottom direction. So voltage rise of 220 I1 plus I2, and then we've got a voltage drop of 20 milliamp minus I2 times 68. So minus 68 ohm times 20 milliamp minus I2. And then we've got R3. And this one, because of the direction that I2 is going through it, it's going from bottom to top as it's labeled. That's going to be a rise of 47 ohm times I2 because the current's going to be entering at the more positive side for our resistor. So that means we add 47 ohm times I2. And we've finished the loop, so we say that that's equal to zero. Now, this is, this is it. That's the end of mesh analysis. Mesh analysis is the technique for getting the two equations into unknowns. In this case, the mesh currents. And once we've got them, once we've got those solved, we could determine the voltages by looking back at the picture where we assigned these mesh currents and thinking about how it is that we would figure out voltages from that. So if we want to know voltage at A relative to the ground, that would be the voltage drop across R2, for instance. So we could say then VA is equal to R2 times I1 plus I2. So maybe VA minus zero to say that that's like the, the voltage drop across R2. And this is an equation that you could use to find VA after you've got the mesh currents. Similarly, VB would be equal to R3 times I2, except wait a minute, that goes in the opposite direction. So since I2 is going up, this is kind of a, this is a drop actually. So on the left side here, we should say zero minus VB is equal to R3 times I2. Okay, and that's how you could find the node voltages. If you wanna know the mesh current, so the current through R3 is I2 in the up direction. So if it turns out that the current through, that I2 is negative, that just means that the current through R3 was actually going down. Current through R4 is 20 milliamps minus I2 going to the right. And that's it. That's how you do mesh analysis.